Let's now take a look at the interface for a contact instrument. I'm going to load in something, maybe from this Abbey Road 70s drummer collection. All right, that sounds good. Double click to load it in. And now we've switched to the main interface for this particular instrument. Now this section over here will really depend on the selected instrument. So this is a drum kit. So we are seeing a virtual representation of a drum kit. We can select certain aspects of the drum kit and we can change certain sound parameters for it. If I close out of here, it's asking me if I'd like to save the changes. I'll select no. Going back into the content browser, let's pick something that's not a drum kit. I'll get out of this collection here. Let's go under bowed strings. Let's pick something from Ethereal Earth. 1000 hisses. Let's load this one in. All right, I'm going to double click. And now again, we've switched to the main instrument view. And again, as you can see, the instrument interface has completely changed. This is no longer a drum kit, a different collection, the Ethereal Earth collection, and we have a different interface. But one thing that is consistent is this upper section over here. In fact, I can click on PV over here to hide away the main graphical user interface for that instrument and just focus on this one aspect of the instrument that doesn't change. If I click over here, we're looking at the classic contact view where we see the classic library selector over here and of course the instrument that was loaded in over here. I can activate the performance view or I can hide it away. All right, so let's focus on this upper section of the instrument since this is the one constant across all the contact instruments. So in the top left corner over here, we have some instrument options. So these are more generic instrument options like DFD control, some MIDI controller options over here. But there are certain libraries where you can actually open up the instrument and look at what's happening behind the scenes. So if I close out of here and pick a different preset, Let's go for emotive strings this time. I'll load in this afterlife. So now you notice that we have a wrench icon and that's the edit button. So when I click over here, now we're looking at the classic contact interface for building instruments. This is what happens behind the scenes and we're gonna explore all this stuff in later tutorials. All right, let's close out of here. This time I'm just gonna load in something from this library viewer over here. So let's scroll up to Ethereal Earth. I can click and drag and drop it into the main interface here and that instrument will be loaded. By the way, you don't get a preview by clicking over here. The preview only works in the content browser. All right, so we're back to this Ethereal Earth instrument. I'm gonna hide the performance view. Let's talk about other aspects of the instrument. We're looking at the name of the instrument here and currently we're in the snapshots view. We can switch to this info view and there's a bunch of other information over here. Let's talk about the snapshots first. So this also varies from instrument to instrument. This particular collection happens to have snapshots, not all of them do. So let's say for this particular instrument, which sounds like this right now. Let's say I'd like to try a different snapshot. So what's happening here is that we're mainly changing certain aspects from the graphical user interface. So these knobs over here and maybe the, the waveforms that are loaded in over here. You can also make changes and then those changes can be saved as your own custom snapshots. All right, so that's the snapshot section. Let's switch over to the info tab. We have a lot more information here. The main output. So currently the sound is going out of stereo one. If I click over here, I can activate the outputs view. And this is like a mini mixer that's built into contact. So currently we're looking at stereo one over here. And as I play notes, you can see the signal is going out of stereo one. We also have four auxiliary outputs. We'll take a look at how to use these later on. All right, you can close out of this window over here. We have a MIDI channel, specifically the MIDI input channel. So you can choose from a specific MIDI controller 
or if you're running contact inside a DAW, you can choose a particular MIDI channel from the particular MIDI track. Voices. So as I play notes, you'll see the number of active voices and the max polyphony is set over here. You can also change this. This is a helpful information on how much memory this particular preset is taking up. Over here, we have solo and mute options. Now, we only have one instrument loaded in, so it doesn't make a difference if we solo this or not, but let's load in multiple instruments. And that's one thing you can do in contact. So I'm gonna keep the ethereal earth and let's load something from analog dreams. I'm just gonna drag this in. Now, as I'm playing notes on my MIDI controller, you notice that Ethereal Earth is still the only one that's playing. This Analog Dreams instrument is not playing, but let's switch over to the Info tab, and you notice that the MIDI channel is set to MIDI channel two. So what I'm gonna do is switch it back to MIDI channel one on my MIDI controller. And that's a pretty dramatic sound, but now both of these sounds are playing simultaneously. So I can mute this one, or solo this one. So like this, you can have up to 64 different instruments loaded up into one instance of contact. All right, I'm gonna close out of here. Let's just work with the Ethereal Earth instrument. Overall tuning for this instrument. 36 semitones up and 36 semitones down. Panning for the instrument. Overall volume control. We already talked about the performance view. We can also activate the aux send view so we can send some of the signal to any of the auxes. And if you remember in the output section, so now the signal is going out of aux one, nothing is happening to it. In fact, it's not even going to the output, so it's kind of grayed out, but we will come back to this later on. So that's the aux view. And we can also minimize this further so it becomes really tiny like this. And lastly, I can hit the X button to remove this instrument. All right, so that's a quick look at the overall interface for a contact instrument.